Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mind Your Business. I'm Jennifer Anderson, host of the show and executive director of the Georgina Chamber of Commerce. Well, this is a new show here on Rogers TV Georgina, and we really started the show to connect businesses to the resources that are available to them in our community. It was important to start the show a little bit earlier supposed to air in the fall. It's now airing now because at this time, businesses really need to be connected to the resources and information um, that they are in desperate need of during this COVID-19 pandemic. With me today on this episode are members of the town of Georgina. We have the mayor of Georgina, Margaret Quirk. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for this great opportunity. Really appreciate it. We also have Rob Weeder, who is the Director of Corporate Services and the Treasurer for the Town of Georgina. Hi, Rob. Hi, thank you for having me. And we have Karen Stone, who is the Manager of Economic Development, Economic Development and Tourism Division. Welcome, Karen. Thank you, Jen, and uh, certainly this is a timely show. I decided that I would invite only people who had really long titles. <laughs> That's all we have time for. <laughs> so, um, it's important to have the three of you on the show today because you are uh, certainly the pulse of the town, pulse of the community when it comes to businesses and making decisions. So I want to thank you for being here. And certainly... You know, we keep seeing uh, every day, every hour, things change. Uh, there are announcements made. So uh, we are recording this on March 31st. That's important to note because things are changing on a daily basis. Well, they certainly are. One of the things that uh, I said at our last council meeting, which was, geez, I think, last Tuesday, but I'm losing days now, is that things are changing on an hourly basis. Can be different than the decisions we end up making in the afternoon. Right. Now, this is, we can't say it's business as usual, but certainly for the town, you have been at work, you have been um, making important decisions um, as, as things change. Correct, Mayor? Yes, exactly. We uh, do have business continuity plans, and I'm sure Mr. Weeder will get into that a bit more, but the town is still functioning. We have all our facilities um, closed, but there is essential staff um, at the Civic Center and at some other facilities as well, um, and certainly our customer service uh, lines are still open. Uh, there's still activity happening within the building department, within economic development. Uh, we still have uh, many resources that are still, um, either people are working at home, or they, they're working um, physically distant at the Civic Center. We are there operating. Well, and we certainly have seen a lot of announcements and, and you have been great to um, not only as the town and the website preparing those announcements and, and having them available on the website, but on social media, you are spreading the word about uh, current um, situations, things that are happening. Um, you declared a state of emergency a week ago, and it, it seems like it, you know, sometimes yeah. it seems like a year ago, and sometimes it seems oh, like, like yeah. how many days does the month of March have? I don't know, 800 and some odd. Um, <laughs> but yes, that was a, a decision not made lightly. Um, it was the first time that the town has ever declared an emergency uh, situation of that nature. Um, we wanted to align ourselves with the, with the province to ensure that. Uh, what they did, uh, we could uh, could also do. And it also sent out the message to our residents that this is very serious. And I can't say it, it more uh, that we need to follow the, the guidelines of public health, the social distancing, the physical distancing, the stay home. If you don't need to be out, stay home. If you need to get groceries or medical supplies, if you're an essential worker, that's different, but you know, just, Going out uh, for the sake of going out is just not something that uh, that we can can do right now. And the longer we don't do that, the longer we'll be in this situation. You mentioned that that state of emergency was to align um, with the province. That's exactly what it it allows you to do. Correct by um, by declaring that state, you are now in a position where you can make certain decisions. Exactly. And it, uh, it does give us the ability, if we were to need volunteers, if it was a flood situation, for example, and we needed people to fill sandbags, we could then use volunteers and have them covered under the, uh, the, the health and safety in the workplace. So they would be deemed to be employees. So it gives us that ability. Um, on a greater note, though, I think it really brought home the fact that this is, this is serious and that 
we wanted to make sure that we aligned with the, with the province and what they're doing. Um, things that are happening sometimes we're ahead of what other municipalities are doing in terms of you know some closures. It was great that last night uh, the, the premier also closed all the uh, the parks and outdoor recreational facilities because that has been a, a huge uh, issue for for us here. So that was that was good for the the province to do that. Right. Karen, I'm going to ask you a couple questions because I'm going to kind of go through and then and we can all have a discussion at the end. But um, certainly the Chamber of Commerce works very closely with your department. Um, so I know that you were receiving calls like us from desperate business owners, desperate um, employees who are just trying to find out answers for their business. Yes. Yeah, so, Jen, I know um, we've both been sharing all the links to the various things that that have been released at the local, provincial, regional level, federal level. It's overwhelming at times for everyone, and I know we're trying to sift through that information and make it um, as user-friendly or put it in layman's terms so our, our residents and our businesses can understand it a little bit better. And I know we've had a call today with Scott Davidson, and certainly some of the information um, that came out was sort of very helpful, and I know you and I will be helping to give that to the businesses. And also, finding out more about those programs we have staffed that, that you and I that can help them um, navigate, you know, how to access some of those funding programs. And I think one of the things that hit home today was um, a lot of these programs are going to be available through CRA Canadian Revenue Agency. And if you haven't got the CMI account set up with CRA, I think that was one takeaway today. And that was one of the last points to mention as we all listened in. It is it, Get ready for the time when all that information is going to filter down and the portals are going to open up with the application form. You're going to need probably a CRA account with Nintendo, so that's something to look forward to. Absolutely, and I, I know that um, businesses, and I think you probably agree businesses just want answers they're scared they don't know the direction that things are heading and it's hard because nobody has the answer um, but certainly you know when it comes to a little bit of financial relief and having that federal um, program that's in place with wage subsidy and the emergency relief benefit will go a long way for local businesses to know that um, there is a little bit of relief coming in the near future yeah and um what we're doing right now is we're working with our um, northern six municipalities sorry, in our region as well as what we economic development staff because we're, we're realizing that the coordinated effort would be much better and i know the chambers doing the same with their chamber organizations across ontario um, we're putting together a online triage form that will, can, residents if they can't find the information that they want to access they can fill out this online form and then it'll come to our economic development offices and we'll be able to assist them. This also allows us to regionally start to collect the information that's going to help inform recovery efforts because we know the recovery efforts are going to be a really a coordinated effort between all of us. And um, we're, no one individual organization, you or I, are going to do it alone. But the better we work together and the more information we need on the specifics from the business community, that'll help us. Right. And certainly, you know, we don't need to duplicate our efforts. Uh, we just need to come together and, and um, be a strong alliance for businesses um, who are struggling in our community. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we'll keep our discussions ongoing. Um, just to, to the mayor's point in terms of the business services and the business continuity here at the Civic Center, um, I just wanted to let you know that our planning and building departments, we still do have staff in both of those departments. So we're still able to process building permit applications, planning applications down. Planning applications often require a public meeting and a statutory process. We can process them to a certain point. We won't be bringing them to council, of course, or council's not meeting at this time, but we don't want anyone, to, businesses and residents to take the art um, processing your applications. We will do our best to take them in and we can deliver them by courier. Um, during office hours, um, we allow you to submit them electronically or um, to mail them in. And I encourage you, if you're thinking about submitting a planning application or a building department application, please give our offices a call and they'll tell you exactly how to submit all those that application. Good. Uh, Rob, 
couple questions mm -hmm. for you. Um, there was a, an emergency council meeting that took place, as, as the mayor mentioned, last week, and uh, there was some relief that came to residents and to businesses as well, and that was in um, the deferral of some penalties. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Jen, that's correct. Um, so right, right away, um, we, we needed to look at ways where we can help residents and, and help businesses uh, with cash flow over the next little while. Um, so one of the ways is we, we have an April 27th uh, property tax installment due date. Um, and normally, if you didn't meet that due date, there would be uh, penalties and interest charged uh, right after April 27th. Um, so we are uh, waiving penalties and interest uh, currently for 30 days. However, we are looking at uh, the possibility of waiving them for 60 or even possibly 90 days. And uh, Council did provide our uh, CAO, Dave Redden, um, with the, uh, the authority to do that. So we will be looking at that um, within the, the coming weeks. So it and I know it's kind of like having that crystal ball, right? You can't you can't foresee the future, and so waiving for one month is you know one thing, but certainly taking a look at the options for future months will go a long way for everybody involved, residents and businesses. Yeah, I, d I definitely agree. We're we're also going to be waiving uh, the the charges related to uh, transferring water bills over to the tax account if you don't meet your April. Uh, water deadline. Um, so I, I just wanted to uh, emphasize as well, if, if residents can pay by the due date, we, we really do encourage you to do that. Um, because really the, uh, the, the point of waiving the interest and penalties is to really assist those that truly um, are having cash flow issues due to this pandemic. So if individuals can pay on time, we do encourage that because it um, essentially it will assist the town's cash flow, which means we can further assist those in need. Well, and I did see that. I did watch the council uh, meeting online, and, and you did indicate with the, the more months that the penalties were um, deferred, uh, the greater cost it was to the municipality. Yeah, that is correct. So waiving them for about one month, I guess, costs us about $100,000. And uh, as you get into three months, it goes up to almost 400000 Wow. Wow. Um, a question for you, and I know that it's not town related um, per se, but I'm sure you hear this from a lot of businesses. We certainly hear one of the number one things people are talking about is the fact that they still, you know, as we hit April 1st tomorrow, rent is due, payments are due, and businesses are struggling to make ends meet. So I think with all th three, four levels of government, we've seen the question uh, asked to each level about deferring rent payments. This is not a municipal issue. Um, but uh, businesses are desperate. They, they aren't making money, therefore they can't pay their bills. So uh, just looking for a comment from, from one of you on this topic. Um, sure, I, I can jump in. We'll first give it to the last. budget guy. We'll give it to the, the numbers guy. <laughs> Um, so, so one of the items we're, we're currently uh, looking at at the town, uh, we've created an internal uh, task force to, to look at um, how we can financially help uh, some of the businesses that, that are going to be struggling, some of the smaller businesses uh, in the town. And uh, I'll, I'll be leading that team along uh, with Karen Stone as well as uh, Jeff Harrison. Um, so we, it, it's one thing to, to defer uh, interest and penalties, but a lot of times that savings isn't getting passed on to the, uh, to the business owner because the business owner could just be leasing the space or renting the space. Um, so we are looking at the possibility of creating a, a grant program uh, where small businesses could apply uh, for a grant and if they meet a certain criteria, which hasn't been determined yet, but if they meet a certain criteria, then we could get the money into the hands of the small businesses right away. Well, and I think this information is important to relay to people because I uh, often um, people are asking questions and it's to the wrong level of government. So m letting people know that you are listening and that you hear these concerns, but it's not um, the responsibility or, or necessarily something the municipality can um, create or amend, um, I think it goes a long way for the businesses, but it sounds like there are steps being made to, to provide some relief in that area. Yeah, you're absolutely correct, Jen. Um, but yeah, there, there are some steps that we really do want to try to take so we can help those small businesses. Yeah, okay. I, I'll, I'll jump in from a political side. 
we need all levels of government to, to help. We can't do this on our own. Um, when it comes to deferring or, or you know, uh, scaling back uh, taxes, our portion is only a small portion. We also are collecting the region's portion, the, the school board's portion, so for the province. Um, so we need all the levels of government to, to work with us because we do know that big and small businesses are, are suffering with the impact of, of COVID-19. So we want to do what we can to, uh, to help them through this. But Rob's right. Um, deferring the payment is, is one thing, but, you know, there needs to be more than, uh, than that, that, uh, that, that can help the, uh, the businesses on the ground. And certainly Scott's discussion today was, was really good. And in fact that, you know, you don't have to uh, be uh, self-employed or business owner to be able to tap into these uh, assistance for, uh, for wages. So that's, that's a, a real plus, but we really um, are trying to work with, uh, with all levels. I've talked several times uh, with Caroline Mulrooney and with Scott Davison over the last number of days, and certainly uh, they're wanting to, to, to help as much as they can. And as I said, to Scott, programs that are rolling out right now would normally have taken a year or two years to, to finalize and to get into shape and to roll out. They're rolling things out in hours and days, and that's why they don't have all the answers. They don't have the portal set up, but they know they've been inundated, like all of us have been, with those questions from residents about how do I pay my bills or, you know, what am I going to do for my, my rent money? Uh, you know, I, I get a lot of calls and, and trying to sort through which is the best level of government to, to answer their question and that's that's key people have questions and as we all said the information is coming in hourly and changing right um another question for you rob the the idea of businesses being proactive and i am asking you um as as the treasurer um karen mentioned the my cra account and and having businesses be proactive, set up their account, get ready for some of the portals that will unfold over the next uh, couple of days and weeks. Um, is there anything that you think businesses should be doing from a budget standpoint in order to, whether it's get affairs in order or take a look at the, you know, budgets have certainly changed now that times have changed. So um, should businesses be looking at those things and reassessing? Uh, absolutely. The, this is uh, obviously a major disruption to, to a lot of businesses in town. Um, so the, they, they should be reviewing their budgets, uh, really their, their weekly, their monthly budgets. And uh, we, I, I think we know this is going to go on for, uh, for several weeks, um, possibly, uh, you know, going farther than that. So I think they should be re-looking at their budget, trying to find ways where they can uh, find some savings and and really um, doing a short-term outlook as well as more of a long-term outlook as well, because once this is over, they're gonna have to think about, you know, how can they get um, back up and running uh, as quick as possible so that they can continue on. And Jen, I think um, one of the things that you and I both know is that there's a number of resources out there, and now is the time to sort of reach out to some of those small business support resources that are available. Certainly they're not doing the face-to-face meetings, but there's the New York Region Small Business Enterprise, and there's also South Lake Community Futures, and they do um, small business planning, and now is the time to reach out to them. Um, you and I can direct them if they call the Chamber or call the Economic Development Office here at the town. Um, we can direct them to those resources and certainly feel free. Um, if they aren't closed, they're looking to help you during this time period. Um, I'm I'm finding it very interesting uh, seeing the relief in in small ways or different ways. Um, one of those is uh, the noise bylaw with the town, and it's just it's not something you would necessarily think of being an advantage to businesses during this time. But even um, creating some leniency with some of the bylaws that exist are certainly helping businesses. Um, Madam Mayor. Yeah. Yes, because uh, certainly we know that uh, certain supplies and stores have been, things have been running off the shelf, toilet paper, uh, basic necessities. Uh, so the stores are having to restock much faster than normal because it's going out the front door much faster than normal. Uh, so we have uh, re relaxed the, uh, the, the noise by law to, to allow for that. So sometimes you're right, it's those little things that, that make a big, uh, a big 
make a big difference for uh, for our business community. Right. Even the bag tag exemption, it's, oh. it's just another example if, if businesses are maybe reassessing what they're doing right now. Well, I tell you, I think when, we, when we posted that, I'm not sure, the last count I saw, I think there was like 400 shares of, uh, of that post saying, because people are, they're home, um, they're bored, so they're cleaning out the basement, cleaning out the garage, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's an activity that kids are all helping with that. So relief on that, uh, the bag tags is, is uh, was, was huge for a lot of people to be able to know that they could put the five bags out, uh, out free without uh, having to, to get a bag tag. Um, I, I am absolutely positive that I am amongst people who love this community. Um, you are all big fans of Georgina and uh, promote that every chance that you get. Um, what, what are the things that you're seeing? I mean, it comes as no surprise that people are stepping up, that businesses are changing their models and stepping up and helping others. But um, what are some of those good news examples in a time that's stressful? Let's oh. talk about something great. Well, I think Lori Carrier Pangman, oh my goodness, that woman's out there in her Easter Bunny outfit and, and different costumes trying to bring some some cheer and joy to uh, to people. The, the free deliveries from uh, many of the, the stores, Queensway Market, uh, you know, the, and that's another thing that the grocery store clerks, who would think that during an emergency situation that your frontline people are your grocery store clerks, your gas station attendants, the frontline people, the people, the truck drivers bringing the, the food to, to the stores, they need our undying thanks and support uh, through this. But there's been some, some positive stories. You see things online, the, Georgina pop up breakfast club that's that's formed. Uh, neighbors helping neighbors, dropping things off for people that were out of town. You know, snowbirds coming back. So I think we have a really strong, resilient community, and we all want to want to help. And certainly reaching out to the food pantry if I can give a plug for that. If you are able to give a, a cash donation, go onto their website. It's easy to do. Um, they will need all the help that we can possibly um, give them in the coming weeks because more and more people will be turning to uh, to the food pantry. So if there's things you can um, can help them with, that that's one to, to look at. No, I well, just, just, uh, just to, on the support of our local businesses, they're doing everything they can do to support our community. And I think uh, now is the time to really step up our support of the local businesses. We want to make sure that either those can weather the storm, but whether they're partially open for takeout or online delivery, online shopping, Absolutely. Yeah. We want to make sure those businesses can reopen when the time is right. So we've got to do everything we can to yeah. support them. And I know our business improvement areas, we can come to looking at ways to support our business improvement areas. Uh, we'll have more, more to share on that. But um, it's really important that the residents support those businesses that support us all year long. Right. Well, and you see, we've been seeing those memes too, right? It's, you know, these are the businesses that have been supporting um, local hockey and, and local sports, sure. and now's the time to give back and to support them. Yeah. Um, Mayor Cork, what, ha what happens next? Um, you are changing. I'm get my crystal ball out. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with something you can answer. What happens next in terms of council meeting again? You are moving to, uh, you know, everybody's moving to this type of conference call. Yeah. We, yeah, we don't have a date yet for our next council meeting, but we are working towards having the council meetings like this on a, on a Zoom platform basis. So that's something our IT department has been extremely busy with uh, assisting our uh, staff that are working from home, getting them set up. So uh, they've been dealing with that, but at the same time, working on getting us ready to, to have our council meetings uh, done by, by Zoom. So that's uh, something new for us uh, again. And again, the province uh, helped with putting the legislation in that allows us to do that, to have quorum uh, by people coming in remotely and the business of the town we did do delegated authority to uh, myself and the CEO for a number of uh, issues but we still need to have council meetings we still need to have that discussion amongst members of council to move forward on on a number of issues as we go through this for the next number of weeks or months. 
And Rob, I certainly know, you know, kind of September, October, November, December, as you're building a giant binder of budget, um, mm -hmm. there has to be some part of you that is thankful that this is not the time of year when all of those things are are being undertaken by the town because um, what what a crazy uh, situation we're in now, but um, should all of this have to be happening during budget time, it would be far worse for you. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, yeah. Um, I'm seeing the bright we'll... side here. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, late, later in the year, it, it will definitely be uh, an interesting uh, budget budget year this year. It'll be uh, quite a bit different due to this, uh, this impact. Yeah. Well, and certainly um, requests, right? As you, you talk to a lot of people and they talk about the simplicity of, of what they're learning in the last couple of weeks, um, being at home, not needing as much, not, you know, so um, we may see a dynamic change where um, people start to shift and work more from home. People start to um, need less in their day to day uh, just because of the situation that we've gone through. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. It'll be a new world when this all ends, and it will. We will get through this, but uh, it will make people stop and think about truly what they need in life. Like, how much do we need? Um, you know, family and friends is what's truly, truly important uh, going forward. And again, I say we have a, such a strong community base here, people wanting to help each other. I've heard from many people that uh, are reaching out to neighbors, and that's what the community is all about. Uh, but it, it's certainly... Uh, change a lot of people's uh, outlook on, on life and realizing what's really important and making sure that, uh, that we move forward, keeping some of those, uh, those thoughts in mind. Very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate all three of you being here today to um, give a little insight into what's currently happening at the town and, and uh, what help is available for businesses. Of course, people can go to the town's website, georgina.ca. And uh, as Karen mentioned, the economic development is still available to be reached um, by calling the town or by going through the website. Um, but certainly if you are a business at home and looking for um, resources Resources and information available, the town site is great. Um, on behalf of everyone here, thank you so much for watching Mind Your Business and we'll see you next time.